Hey, it's Ella from Spline. Today, we'll be creating a spinning 3D icon together. I'll walk you through the entire process step by step from designing the icon and adding color and we're going to animate it. Along the way, you'll pick up some cool tricks like adding delays to enhance your animations and we're going to explore some interactive ways to trigger those animations, such as activating it with a button click. All right, let's get started. We're in a new file and I'll start by taking the default rectangle and turning it into the base shape for the icon. Let's go to the right panel and here in the size options, I will set X to 105 for the width and Y to 400 for the height. Let's increase the corner value to 100. Now I'll quickly change the camera to an isometric view here. And let's add some extrusion. For bevel and for bevel sides, let's use a value of four. Okay, now to complete the design of this spinning icon, we just need to duplicate this shape that we just made and add some rotation. You can do this manually by using Command plus D to duplicate. Then you can adjust the position and then rotate. An easier way to do this is by using the cloner tool. So if you click on the rectangle shape in the right hand panel, let's scroll down until we find the cloner option. Okay, so let's keep the type set to linear and I'm going to select hide. We can set the count to five. So set the X position to zero. And don't worry, the clones are still there. They're just in the center of the composition. So to adjust the spacing between them, we'll have to change the Z value. I'll leave the Z spacing at negative 34. Now adjust the Z rotation to 30. And that's how we build our icon. I can add a color to the background just like this, But I would like to project some shadows, so I'm going to use a rectangle to create a sort of wall for the background. Let's add the rectangle and adjust the position. I'm going to keep it in the center with zero across the board. And there we go. For the color, I'm going to use this light blue tone. A quick trick for adjusting the shadow, you can select the background rectangle and on the lighting blending mode, choose overlay. This way, the projected shadow will be a slightly darker tone than the background. And let's name this layer to background and lock it. Now I'll adjust the position of my directional light. All right, let's make a few more tweaks. Here, set the penumbra to around five, and there we go. This gives us a nice background with a soft shadow for our icon. All right, now let's add some color to this icon. If we go to the material panel and try to apply colors to our figures, it's going to apply the same color to all of the clones, since we used the cloner tool earlier on. Let's start by applying white to the central shape. I want to add a soft gradient starting from the center, so I'll use a depth layer here. I want the shading from the center to be bluish with a bit of white here. You can adjust the origin of your depth layer to soften the gradient. For a final touch, let's click on the lighting layer icon. Let's set the shininess to 100. Adjust the blending mode to overlay and change the lighting to 100. But how can we ensure that these colors will affect the individual shapes? All we have to do is convert to instances. Now we have a group of rectangle clones and each one is its own individual object. In the material panel, click on the depth layer and just change the second color. 
Here, I'll use orange. Done. Now let's repeat this with the other shapes. For the main shape, I kind of want this to be a little more sophisticated. So what I'm going to be doing is adding a glass material. Click on the icon here and set the refraction to about 1.08 and the thickness to 250. And then I'm going to increase the blur to around 175. Adjust the color to blue. And instead of 100, let's use a glass value of 80. Now let's turn off the lighting layer and add a for now for a softer edge highlight. Click here and change the color. I'll use black and set the blending mode to overlay. And that's how we create this blue glass material. You can keep experimenting with different types of materials. Try using elements like the outline layer to create various effects. You can also explore the material library. All right, we're ready to move forward with our animation. I'll create a new state and set the Z rotation to negative 360. For the purple shape, I'll create a new state and adjust the Z rotation to negative 520. And for the pink one, I'll do the same, but I'm going to set the rotation to negative 500. And for the white shape, we'll rotate to a negative 480. And for the orange shape, we are going to do a negative 280. Now, how do we activate these animations? What we need to do is create an event. Let's start by animating just the glass shape. And we're going to create a start event and add a new transition. So here, let's add that new transition and making sure that the glass shape is our target. I'll keep the transition as spring. Now, when we hit play, this is what we see. All right, let's make a few more tweaks. I'll adjust the stiffness and damping here. And for the loop option, I'll select infinite. Now I can simply copy and paste this animation to all of the other shapes. Next, I'll copy and paste the transition we created for the glass shape and just adjust the target to one of our other shapes, like the purple one. Now, if we go to play mode, you'll see that it has the same animation. So let's keep copying and pasting and adjusting the target for the rest of the shapes. In play mode, we can see that all of the shapes are spinning at the same time. But if everything animates all at the same time, it can feel visually overwhelming for the user. So to improve this, let's add a delay value for each shape. Delays help you coordinate animations or transitions with each other. If several elements need to appear or animate in a sequence, adding a delay ensures they happen in the correct order. This allows us to space out the animation so there's not too much happening at once, which makes it easier to kind of understand what's going on and happening on screen. So let's start by setting the delay for the glass shape to two while keeping the rest at zero. As you can see in the background, shapes animate immediately when you click on them, but the glass shape waits two seconds before starting its transition. Now let's keep the delay for the glass shape at two seconds and adjust the delays for the others. So for purple, I'm going to set this to 2.10. For pink, 2.20. For white, 2.30. 
and for orange, 2.40. Now, if we go to play mode, you can see how the delay makes everything feel smoother and more harmonious. And something to keep in mind is try playing around with your camera's position and the perspective to add more depth and create a 3D view of your animation in different ways. Another way to trigger this animation's interactivity is by creating a button and using a state change event. The state change event allows you to trigger actions based on the state of an object. For example, clicking on a button can activate a transition like in this example. First, let's add the animation to the button. I'll select the button, add a new state and adjust the size slightly. Then I'll add an event like mouse hover or mouse press to trigger the animation. This time I'll use mouse press. For the transition, I'll select my base state and state second, keeping the time at 0.2. Now when I go to play mode, clicking the button will make the button increase in size Let's now use the state change event so that this animation only activates when the button is clicked. I'll click here and create a new event selecting state change. In the object section, I need to select the object that will trigger the state change or animation. In our case, we'll choose the button and select changes to state. And we can see then and the else option. If we expand these, we can then add actions for both. And then we'll set up the transition that happens first when the button is pressed. And in else, we'll define what happens afterwards. In this case, when the button is released. Let's start by applying it just to the glass shape. In then, I'll add a new transition action. For the target, I'll choose the glass shape and select the transition from base state to state. The transition as spring and set the delay to zero. I want the object to rotate when the button is pressed and return it to its original position when it's released. For else, I'll reverse the order of transition going from state back to base state. I'll keep the other settings the same. Now, when I go to play mode, you'll see that when I press and hold the button, the element spins and when I release, it returns to its initial position. Next, I'll copy and paste the transition in, then, and else, adjusting the target like we did before for each shape. Now, if we go to play mode, we'll see how everything rotates. So something's missing from here, which is the delay. We need to add a delay to this transition. In then, we'll keep the delay at zero for the first shape and for the purple one, we'll add a delay of 0.10. For the next shape, we'll do 0.2 then 0.3 and for the last one that orange shape we're going to set it to 0.4 in else we want the first object to return to be the orange one and the last one to be the glass shape to do this we'll reverse the delay so this time the delay of zero will be assigned to the last shape which is the orange shape then that will be a 0.10 for the next one 0.2 and for the next it's a 0.3 and a 0.4 for the glass texture which will be the last to return and that's it now i can trigger this interaction and activate this animation only by pressing this button pretty simple that's all for this tutorial 
We hope that you can apply this to your future icons or 3D elements. Let us know in the comments what kind of animation or interaction you'd like to learn next. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.